about the People Support Captains and we are here to talk about what we learned throughout Dyslexia Week. So Matthew, what did you learn over Dyslexia Week? Well, I learned there's multiple different types of de dyslexia. A lot, that a lot of people have it, but what I realised is people, it's, it's like a spectrum. People have one severity and well, different, no, nobody's the exact same. Mm. But also, what I learned is people have different, um, different types of days when they, they have it worse or have it better, mm -hmm. or sometimes it's endless, which uh, is kind of actually hard to believe, but it's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as somebody who is dyslexic, I agree. Some days I have better days where I don't need help with my dyslexia whatsoever. And some days I'll have worse days where I really struggle with my reading and writing and I'll need to ask for help and support. Mm -hmm. um, I do really struggle with my reading and writing, as I said, but um, as Matthew said, uh, everybody does experience it, experience it different. So I might really struggle with my spelling, which is something that I do really struggle with, whereas somebody else might be better with spelling and worse with uh, reading. So it really does depend mm. and vary from everybody. Especially with the variety of different types of dyslexia. Some people may have dyscalculia where they struggle with numbers or one particular I want to talk about is Mearns Erlen syndrome where it actually affects 50% of the dyslexic people and they'll get a lot of eye strain and when they're working under bright lights they'll find it very difficult to read and write etc and you know it's going to be very very difficult for them and they can notice quite glares in the lights and stuff as well it's like their eyes have got a lot of strain on them yeah which can be very very difficult for them in the classroom but like what kind of things can we do in the classroom to help them out that's a good question and what i believe we can do for teacher's sake is they need to know which student in the class is dyslexic they need to they need to target the student they need to know how <clears throat> How they work, where their mindset is, um, where where they perform best, key areas of work that they need to improve on. We need we need a laser focus on that, of course. And um, one good point is for reading, coloured paper is essential, and space. I know Rebecca was talking about experiences before. Mm -hmm. That's essential for a dyslexic person, obviously, if they can't comprehend what the effect of the setting has on them it can alter the understanding of text mm. absolutely so i think obviously there is still more that can be done and obviously we still encourage learning but how do we even find out if a student has it or not um well uh way uh it can be identified is uh when you write like someone notes and um, you can write them up to C's and D's and A and C's and sometimes even like some words don't have like spaces between them. Mm. So uh, we'll keep this from like placing like questionnaires and uh, kind of just like spell the odd one out and uh, you may need more help than others and try and figure out uh, what to put down or try and understand who needs more help. Mm. Definitely, yes, and it can be such a long process for them to be even just identified. It's a long, good few months of testing, well, testing, because there is not a true test for dyslexia, gathering evidence from classes and stuff, mainly English and history because of how much writing is in it, and talking to teachers, as Isaac had mentioned, a questionnaire, and then once, if a student is dyslexic, they'll have a sit down with them and their parents and then that's when they are officially identified as a dyslexic person and then hopefully after that they will start getting support like the coloured paper as Austin mentioned um, and maybe different types of fonts. What kind of fonts can you get? Uh, you could, uh, sometimes you could use Common Sense, I heard that. It could uh, easily help people with dyslexia at times and uh, it's important you also make them quite larger so uh, so people with dyslexia can also read them. Uh, it's quite important to not try to single them out either by mm -hmm. just giving them one separate sheet where everyone else gets some different one. You know, because at the, the end of the day, everyone's, uh, everyone's the same, they all have their own issues and it's important to not single people out. Yeah, 
that was very very true i am as i said before i do have dyslexia myself and i do find that using colored paper rather than white paper is really helpful because white paper is very harsh and it creates the, it makes the words more um Difficult. It's, yeah, it's more difficult to read, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I do find that when using coloured paper, it almost, if you will, calm the words down. And it's a lot easier to read. I also find that using um, a font, such as Comic Sans, as Daniel said, um, so as it splits up the words and it makes them more distinct. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I think that's all we have for uh -huh. today. And I'll say thank you very much for listening to our video about dyslexia. If you want more information, you can look up on our YouTube channel about our Oracle PowerPoint of Dyslexia Week. And um, thank you so much for listening again and have a good day. Bye. 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 Oh, yeah, I don't know what it is. Oh.